Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthemorganti.com. In this video, I'm gonna demonstrate my top five go-to filters that I use in almost every image when I use On One Photo Raw 2018. Now this video is kind of a prelude to this huge video series that I'm currently recording called Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. And in that video series, I'll take you from a novice to a pro in On One Photo Raw. And like all my videos, they will be free, and I hope to get them finished and uploaded to YouTube sometime next week. Now, I mentioned this video is kind of a prelude, kind of a teaser. I'm gonna go over these top five filters that are in the effects module of On One Photo Raw 2018. And I really do use these filters on almost every image. It doesn't matter if it's a landscape image, or an architectural image, or a, uh, even an animal portrait. Uh, it's just these filters, I think, add a lot to my photography, and I think they might help you uh, develop a style or find your style with your photography. Now, I do the filters in a very specific order, and I'll explain as I go. The first filter that I always add is a sunshine filter. Now, again, I add this no matter if it's a landscape image or a a portrait of a person, an animal. I just like the sunshine filter. It adds a little warmth. It adds some color depth to the image. And what I'll typically do is I'll apply the filter and then I go to this little more drop down and I'll hover over the different types of presets that are inside of this filter. Two presets I don't use at all, I've never used is glow and sun glow. I just don't care for those. Those don't really fit my style. But I'll hover over natural, and you see it gets applied to the image when you just hover over the word. So I look at that, and I say, I like that. Then I'll go to radiance, and I'll say, I might like that one a little better. So then I'll hover over strong. Strong is very similar to radiance. And then I'll, go, I'll skip sun glow. I'll go to sunshine. I like sunshine. I might like radiance and strong a little more. Then I'll hover over warm highlights. That's the one I probably use the least of all these. But... In this case, I like Radiance, so I'll just apply the Radiance preset that is inside the Sunshine filter. Now, once I did that, I like the look, but what you'll notice with the Sunshine filter, what it will often do is it'll cause you to lose detail in the highlights. And if you look over here in the top left-hand corner of this image, if I turn the Sunshine filter off, you could see that it kind of wiped out a lot of detail in the clouds up there. So what I like to do then is add a filter to kind of help bring that back. And that is Tone Enhancer. Now in this case, this image was pretty well balanced in tones already, but sometimes my images aren't. I'll have a little bit, the darks are a little bit too crushed or my highlights are a little bit too blown out. And I have to just apply the Tone Enhancer to help recover those. In this case, this image was pretty well balanced, but the sunshine filter did cause these highlights to lose some detail, so I wanna bring that back. Usually, even no matter what, I'll only adjust a couple sliders in this filter. I bring highlights down. Now, I don't have like a formula where I bring them all the way down or two thirds of the way down. I just eyeball the image and I do it total by, totally by feel. I just look at what I'm doing and just slowly bring highlights down till it's in a range I like. It's 65 or minus 65, it looks pretty good. Then as I peruse the rest of the image, it's a little dark over here on the right hand side. So I'm gonna open up shadows just a little bit. Now I wanna be careful, I don't wanna bring shadows open so much that it kind of ruins the other darker parts of the image. I just, I just wanna help this area out a little bit. So I think somewhere around maybe, you know, 10 to 15 in there somewhere looks good. So. Usually that's all I'll do. Sometimes I will add a little detail or clarity also in the tone enhancer. And every now and then I will add an S curve with the curves part of the tone enhancer filter. But for this image, I think we're good just the way it is. So we added the sunshine, kind of give us that little kind of yellow, uh, warm glow or warm look to the image. And in doing that, we kind of lost a little bit up in here. I brought that back with the tone enhancer and then on top of that, opened up the shadows. The next filter I add is dynamic contrast. 
right out of the box, to me, at least, the dynamic contrast is a little bit too strong. It is an awesome filter, though. It's probably my favorite filter in On One Effects. But it's just a little strong, usually for my taste. So usually what I'll do, no matter the image, again, it doesn't matter if it's a landscape or an animal shot or anything, I'll put the opacity at 50, and I'll look at the image. Now, often, when you're dealing with sharpness and clarity and things like that, um, our eyes seem to get fatigued or our brain gets numb to how strong it is. And if you let that happen, you'll tend to put it on a little bit too strong. And you'll look at your image the next day and you'll say, oh, I have dynamic contrast or I have clarity or whatever. I'll ha I have it too high. And you would have wished you had it lower. So often what I'll do is I'll just walk away from my computer for a few minutes and come back and look at it and I often will readjust it a little lower. So for the sake of this video, 50 looks pretty good. So because I'm not gonna get up and walk around, I'm just gonna bring it down to 40. And then you could turn it off and turn it on. And you can see it's, it's more subtle. That's the way I prefer to use it. But again, I encourage you to experiment with it and find it, you know, find it for yourself, how you like to use it how you use it to express yourself through your photography. And that's the whole thing about photography. It's not about making your images look like mine. It's about making your images look like yours. So try that out. Now, again, I add them in this order, the sunshine filter, because I like to add that warmth and that kind of, uh, you know, just that color depth. But then I have to kind of bring back some of those details with the tone enhancer that details that were lost because of that filter with the tone enhancer and the dynamic contrast coming on next brings back those details a little bit more. Now the next filter I always add is a color enhancer. Now it depends on the image of what I do, but typically on a landscape image, I like to make the sky usually a little darker. There are times when the sky's very blue and you don't have to do anything. But usually what I'll do is I'll get on the color enhancer filter and I'll go down here where it says color range and I'll click on this blue swatch. I usually don't like to add any more saturation. I like to just take brightness and I'll bring it down. So you can see if I bring it down or up, it's making the blues either brighter or darker. So I just bring it down. Again, I just eyeball the image till I see it in a range I like and somewhere around minus 18 looks good. So there is before, there's after. You can see it's relatively subtle. I don't like to do anything over the top. The next thing I do, especially with these images that have foliage in it, grass and stuff, I'll go to the green filter, or this green color swatch in the color range section of the filter. And again, I, I don't usually like to add or even remove saturation. I'll just go right to brightness. Now, usually what I like to do in your grasses, there's going to be a lots of green and a lot of yellow. Even though it kind of all looks green when you're looking at it, you'll find that when you're developing your image that there's a lot of yellow also. So usually what I like to do is I like to separate those. And the way I do that is I'll take the brightness of the green down. And you can see there's not a lot it's doing. It's doing the grass in front of the building here and the grass in between the trees over here. So let me move it around, you can see. So I'll bring green down usually, like that. Then I'll go to the yellow swatch in the color range area here and I'll go to brightness and I'll bring yellow up. Now I don't wanna bring yellow up so high and you can see how it's brightening up some parts. I don't wanna bring it so high though that it starts looking radioactive because that's very easy to do with this yellow swatch and the brightness slider. I just want to bring it up just a little bit. So it helps add some color depth. It's not as obvious on this scene, but if you have a scene with a lot of grass in it, a lot of trees in it, a lot of leaves on the trees, you can see the trees here lost most of their leaves. But if you have a situation or a scene like that, you'll see that it will add a lot of depth to that greenery. So you'll have a lot of uh, like green with yellow highlights. And that's what I like to go for. So I add that filter fourth. Finally, I finish up the uh, filters with a vignette filter. And you guys know that watch my videos, I almost always add a vignette on my images. I just helps bring the viewer's attention towards the middle of the image. 
Now, typically what I will do is I'll open the vignette filter in on one effects and I'll click on subtle, see what it looks like. I'll click on strong and I'll click on big softy. I would say for 75% of my images, it's somewhere between strong and big softy, meaning I don't use strong right out of the box and I don't use big softy on, uh, right out of the box. I like it in the middle, somewhere between those two. So usually what I'll do is I'll click on the big softy uh, preset that is inside this filter. Then I'll go down here to size and I decrease the size. So instead of having it converged way in toward the middle, I, I bring it way out. And I do that, I like it nice and feathered. I like that look, but I want it to uh, just not encroach on the middle quite as much. I want it to be a little more towards the edges. So that's what I do. So those are my five go-to filters that I always use in on one Photo Raw 2018 effects. Uh, again, I put them in that specific order for those specific reasons we talked about. But for me, I think it really, really makes my images pop and stand out. So experiment with those five filters. See if you find some settings that work for you in those filters. And of course, there's other filters I use on occasion. And in that video series I mentioned, mentioned before, Mastering on One Photo Raw 2018, I'll talk about more filters than these five. So look for that, again, that video series. I hope to have it finished and uploaded to YouTube next week. And as you could probably tell from the excitement in my voice, I'm super stoked about this series. I think it's going to be one of my best ever. I'd like to just thank everyone that watches my videos. It's because of you I do them. So thank you very, very much. I really do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you guys soon.